Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D Collisions and Game Maker. Today we're going to do something easy, in the last couple weeks we have dealt with uh, 3D collisions between triangles and other shapes, and that has been quite a bit of math. Today we're going to do something easy. Uh, today we're also going to do something that is not very good and you don't want to actually do in practice in the real world anywhere ever, and that is going to be checking for uh, collisions with 3D triangle meshes by uh, iterating over every single triangle in the 3D collision mesh and checking it for collision independently. Anyway, here's a palm tree. This is one of the uh, the Kenny 3D models from uh, from Kenny.nl's uh, one of his his low poly uh, asset collections. And today we're going to be using it as our test dummy. We are going to be using this to uh, detect some 3D collisions against. Um, as you can see, none of the other shapes that I can add to the scene. Um, do any sort of a, any sort of collision checking with this thing. Um, let's see. That is a that is a single triangle. That is a plane. That is a line. That is a uh, an axis aligned bounding box that we can move around. And how how do I I don't know what the controls for this thing are. Uh, no three D collisions are detected. Is the point. Uh, if you want to take a quick look through the uh, through the code that's driving this test project that I've written uh, on my own time. Uh, one, we can see that we are loading another uh, vertex buffer from a file. Instead of being called like grid or ab or plane or whatever, this is just a tree.vbuff. And we are uh, instantiating one of those if you hit the M key or the, uh, the six key on the number pad on the keyboard, just like we are with the other collision test shapes. Um, let's see, the way that this works is a little bit different from some of the other uh, collision test uh, shapes. So the uh, the call test uh, mesh takes a vertex buffer as its input as do the other shapes, but it also uh, will do a little bit of converting that to a regular buffer and extracting all the triangle information and feeding the triangle information into a an array of call triangles. Um, I'm not going to get into how you would turn a vertex buffer into a regular buffer and do things to it. I've done that in several videos in the past. I will have links to that around. And then once that is done, the triangle array is fed into a new constructor for a collision mesh, which is a new uh, struct type that I have created. So the collision mesh takes an array of triangles. Uh, triangles are in turn another collision uh, type in the, um, where are they? Up here, this one, this big thing here that I'm scrolling through, the call triangle. And that's it. It doesn't contain any transform information, at least not yet. I'm sure I'll be getting to that soon enough. Uh, it's got some dummy methods, uh, check point, check sphere, check add, check plane, check triangle, check mesh, check ray, check line. Uh, at the current moment, these all return false. I've also added to all of the other collision shapes. I'm not going to scroll all the way back up there. I've also added to all the other collision shapes uh, check mesh method, which just uh, turns turns the equation around and calls the meshes check, check whatever method. This should be check ray. Did not turn that around properly, and did I make the same typo in line? I did not. Okay. So we're going to do this in a very simple way, and I want you to pay attention to uh, some certain things when I do this. Uh, one, I want you to take a wild guess as to what the frame rate is going to be before I run the game, after doing all this. And two, I want you to uh, actually look at the frame rate that we're getting when we run the game and compare that to what you, what you expected. Uh, for reference, these these trees that I'm that I'm working with here are I want to say about 400 triangles. All right, this is the this is the 3D model. This is 488 triangles, which is not small, but it's also um, but it's also definitely not huge. So to do this the uh, the easy way, we can write a little for loop in each of these checkpoint, check sphere, whatever methods. We can say for var i equals zero. Um, n equals array length self dot triangles i is less than n i plus plus and we can say if um, self dot triangles index i dot check point uh, the input point if there is a collision return true if there is not a collision at the end of the day return false and we can do this very very similar strategy for each of the rest of the um each of the rest of these shapes. So check sphere, uh, check ab, um, ab, a, a, b, b, check plane, 
What happened here? Copying and pasting the wrong things. Uh, check triangle. So checking each triangle against another triangle. Uh, check mesh. Uh, we can check each triangle against the mesh independently. This one's a little bit elaborate because this is going to jump through several stack frames. Uh, check one mesh is check mesh is going to loop through its triangle, each of its triangles. It is going to uh, have that triangle uh, check the mesh. Uh, when triangles check mesh, uh, that is going to get turned around and call uh, meshes check triangle. And that is uh, for every triangle in the same mesh we are going to check. And they need to update these variable names. I'll get there in a minute. Uh, we need to check a uh, triangle against a triangle. So that's like four stack frames that we have to jump through. And if you think that uh, mesh collision checking by, by doing this linear search like this is not going to be super efficient, well, um, you'll see. see the, the last thing I need to do is uh, update all these variable names. And rays also take the hit info. Plane, ab, and sphere, like that. Okay, so this is nominally all we're going to do in this video. Uh, this was a lot of uh, what one might call busy work. And we're just iterating over every triangle in a mesh and checking that triangle, checking each triangle for a collision with whatever the incoming shape is. And let's see, the other thing, I did write some code so that you can move the, uh, move the triangles around with the arrow keys the same way that you can with the other basic shapes, but uh, that's a little bit more involved since um, considering that collision mesh shapes do not contain transform information yet, which you can totally do. You can totally uh, store a transform matrix and then matrix multiply the each triangle or whatever by the transform matrix before checking it, but we're not going to do that today. We just, uh, we just go in a loop and update the positions of each of these triangles manually. So let's run the game. And um, as I, as I said, when I started typing today, uh, just take a wild guess as to what the frame rate is going to end up lo looking like uh, when I start checking meshes against other uh, shapes and compare that to what we actually see. So if I create a, uh, a collision mesh and check it against a single point, this is a single point in shape, I can move the, sh move the point around and you'll see that uh, we're getting about 30, high 30s frames per second just by checking this one single point against a triangle mesh containing almost 500 triangles. We are not, checking points against triangles is honestly not super useful because uh, triangle meshes do not inherently have a concept of inside versus outside. So where, a, for example, a sphere and a, um, a point uh, has concept of whether or not the point is inside the sphere or not, collision meshes kind of don't by default. And this will only return true if the uh, if the point lies flat against one of the triangles of the mesh. Um, next, we can test this against a collision sphere, and this is where things start to get interesting. I can zoom in a little bit. If I were to move the mesh, okay, maybe I should look at it from above. If I were to look to move the sphere in or out, we can see collision is being detected correctly. Um, we can see that there is space here. There is no collision being detected with the sphere, but the frame rate is diving sub 20 which is just utterly beautiful. If I were to move the sphere up, we can see that the um, at the point where the top of the tree um, starts to pass through the sphere, we do have the shapes uh, detect being detected as overlapping. If I move it up further, we can see that the collision goes away. If I mouse over the, um, if I mouse over the, the what is it? The, um, oh God, the, the, the tree mesh, you can see that we do indeed have correct ray casting. Um, I have, uh, a raycast hit being detected. Well, correct. It is functional raycast hit being detected anyway. Um, against each of these triangles, you can see that if I were to point my mouse at the uh, at the trunk of the tree, we have the ray uh, indicating its hit position and also the normal of its hit position. However, um, there are certain certain places where the wrong triangle will be detected, and by wrong triangle, I don't mean that we will be erroneously detecting a raycast into the triangle. I mean that there may be a triangle that is uh, closer to the origin of the ray. Uh, in other words, the camera that should be um, that should be detecting a ray hit, and instead it seems to be detecting one with some, with one farther away. And that is because uh, we are doing a linear search um, throughout the uh, the triangle mesh. 
And whatever the first uh, triangle that the ray happens to hit happens to be, that is the one that it will return. And it will um, it will not wait to see if it can find a, a closer by ray cast hit. Uh, you may also notice that while for the most part, and I'm going to zoom back out a little bit, while for the most part the frame rate is sub-20 for the sphere versus, uh, sphere versus, um, god, uh, tree, sphere versus mesh, uh, there are certain places that you can put the sphere which will cause it to increase somewhat. So if I were to, oh, come on, moving this thing around is hard. I'll just, I'm just going to give you some insider information. The, in the internal order that the vertices are stored in the, uh, the triangle mesh, in the vertex buffer, uh, the trees, the leaves on the top, the triangles on the top happen to be earlier in the vertex buffer than the triangles on the stem. So if you detect a collision with any of the uh, any of the triangles up on the top over here, you're going to exit out of the loop earlier than if you were to check for a collision with one of the triangles on the bottom. You can see when I move the sphere down, uh, the frame rate plummets back to back to sub twenties. This is not information that you should ever have to depend on, uh, because if you're going to do a 3D collision check against a, against a collision mesh, you should be doing something a little bit smarter than what I'm doing now. Anyway, moving on to some of the other shapes, we have abs. I can move the ab up. This is actually even worse than the, um, than the sphere was, because axis align bounding box collision checks are a little bit more involved than sphere collision checks. Um, we have, it looks like we're, we're dancing between 11 and 12 frames per second, occasionally dipping down to 10. Uh, again, if I were to check the axis align bounding box against the top of the tree, that is going to be slightly more performant than checking it against, for example, the bottom of the tree. Um, what other shapes do we have? This is an individual triangle. Same deal. Uh, it looks like we actually have, uh, the triangle performing slightly better than the, uh, the axis align bounding box, which actually surprises me. I was expecting the triangle to perform, to perform worse. Um, you can try the other shapes. There is a plane. We can move the plane up and down. We have the, the plane overlapping or not overlapping. And uh, possibly the most fun one that we can do, we have two, two meshes, and we're checking for intersection between each of these meshes. And I hope this is going to like record without crashing my computer, because we, we are getting sub one frame per second here. Wow, that's impressive. So, this is a, a bit of a lighthearted fun video. I'm going to just close the game now so that I don't have to, like, have this chugging away on my computer. Uh, don't do this. Next time, like I said, we will be talking about ways to organize collision meshes into a hierarchy so that you don't have to check every single triangle in it if you're checking for collision. Uh, generally speaking, you actually want to avoid doing mesh collision checks entirely. If you can approximate the shape of, for example, a tree with something like a capsule or something like an axis line bounding box, you should. If you can approximate the shape of, like, for example, a building with something like a, an axis line bounding box, you definitely should. I have not covered capsules or oblique bounding boxes yet, but those tend to be very useful when it comes to approximating collision shapes with things like walls or uh, rotated objects or characters or that sort of thing. And also, and I think this is something that a lot of people have realized at one point or another, but if you do want to do a collision collision check against a mesh, uh, you generally want to, instead of uh, using the entire visible mesh with every single triangle, you generally want to use a simplified collision mesh for a mesh collision, because generally speaking, you can you can approximate the, uh, the shape of, of objects. And if you do have an irregularly shaped object that you want to do a precise collision check against, you generally don't need the full however many thousands of vertices it might be, you generally only need maybe a couple dozen, maybe a couple hundred at most. Anyway, just for a little bit more fun, uh, you may be wondering, this code has been running on the, uh, the GameMaker virtual machine, which is the default way of uh, running GameMaker games. Uh, you may be wondering how this performs if you run this in the YoYo compiler, and uh, the answer to that is better, but it's still not anywhere near what you would want in something resembling a game. So I'm going to just build this code using the YoYo compiler, and we can see how this is going to perform. A uh, compilation is going to take a thousand, I believe, lines of code in here, and that's gonna that's gonna take a bit to compile. Okay, we, it looks like we're uh, we're starting up, and okay, here we have a point against a point that is about as inexpensive as it gets. We're just checking two vectors in space to see if they equal each other. We're getting about four thousand FPS real here. If I were to give myself a collision mesh, uh, we are getting about, it looks like, 70 or 80. 
if I were to bring in a, uh, a more complex shape than a single point, like an axis line bounding box, we are getting now um, mid twenties, which is about twice the frame rate that we were getting before. Although it's still not anything to write home about. Definitely don't think anybody wants to ship a game that's running at like twenty four frames per second when all that's happening in it is like drawing two objects plus doing a collision check between them. And uh, let's uh, let's God forbid let's do a mesh against the mesh. Okay, wow, all of. 16 frames per second. Again, depending on where I attempt to check for collisions here, we are going to be seeing the frame rate. Okay, this is more like it. We're getting one and a half, uh, maybe a little bit better than that. FPS real. Beautiful. Don't ever run this in an actual game. Um, I don't know how many times it would be beneficial for me to say this before it starts to just get annoying. Uh, this is, we'll be doing something better next time. I do hope that you found this uh, this little video fun. However, I am going to commit this code to GitHub all the same. I might not merge this in, this one into master. I might just leave this on the week fifteen meshes uh, branch, just for uh, just for a little bit of fun. Anyway, uh, by the way, in case you're wondering exactly how many operations we're doing, or at least how many triangle triangle operations we're doing, um, at most. And I do want to make a video on runtime analysis eventually, but uh, if there are 488 triangles in the tree mesh, and each of those is checking against uh, each other triangle in the tree mesh to see if there's a collision, uh, we are doing at most a quarter million triangle triangle checks per frame. Uh, you can see why that is causing the frame rate to dive. Uh, triangle triangle checks not being super, super efficient as it is. Anyway, what does my usual sign off even consist of? I don't know. I try to post about two game dev videos every week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial, if you can count this as that, and one um, one let's make a tower defense game. Although I won't really be able to say that anymore after next week because that is officially finished. If you want the code for this, uh, warts and all, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, look for links to that in all the usual places as well. You can see some fun things like your name in the credits or hear a verbal shout out of yourself at the end of every video. Maybe see a preview of my future plans once in a while. Otherwise, I can't really say I hope you found this useful because I honestly hope that nobody ever uses code like this in an actual game. But whatever it is, I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Edward Holt, Posho, Emily Coyo, Tusk, Sindra Larson, Gunnar Clovis, Square Crow, and Azarel Studios for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.